to uh, win a competition from the New York City Economic Development Corporation. Um, so we have some startup funding to help us get going on that. Um, so it's a big opportunity, we're very excited. Um, so on behalf of both the Noble Maritime Collection and Staten Island Makerspace, um, welcome everybody. Um, so I guess I am next in line to introduce um, Noel Hidalgo from Code for America. So come on up, Noel. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I get a feel like Anthony Weiner here trying to get this. <laughs> I got a cable. Um, so hi, my name is Noel Yelko, uh, or Noel. Uh, I work for this organization called Good for America. Um, we, for, since 2009, have had a small little meetup here in New York City. Um, it's now known as Beta NYC, and we're, we focus on the issues that are being addressed in the roadmap to the digital city. Um, and so this evening, um, I'll be going around and checking in on the different groups that will be uh, facilitating, um, asking you pretty much um, three things. One, uh, for the groups that have been broken out to select a facilitator. Two, to come up with uh, three to five uh, brief talking points that you can talk back and present back to the general group. Um, and then three is be prepared to uh, engage and have some questions asked of you um, in that in, in final presentation roadmap, uh, closing presentation of the roadmap. Um, so three things. One, um, you're all going to be broken down into groups, which Sina's going to be talking to you a little bit uh, about. Two, um, is come up with two to three uh, talking points that you can report back to the general group and then be prepared to take some questions on the broader questions. So, cool. Nice to see so many set members out here. So hi everyone, maybe I should have started off by uh, letting you all know what my name is. I'm Seema, I manage partnerships at NYC Digital. We have our entire staff here with us today, uh, sort of devoting their time and energy to really hear what Staten Islanders have to say in terms of helping the city achieve its digital potential. So NYC Digital folks, if you want to just like raise your hand and let, you know, identify yourself and sort of, um, you know, feel free to tap on any one of us throughout the course of this evening if you have any questions about format, logistics, um, or any of the topics covered in the presentation. So I'm going to start with um, a fun little video about the city's uh, thriving tech industry here in New York.
songs that we are do something out of We are Second Market. We're BuzzFeed. We're Tudor Spray. We are Sheep Weed. We are Porky. It's like a baby whale that's growing. <laughs> <laughs> New York City is the hottest place in the tech universe. To improve access to healthcare by putting patients first. Activating young people to rock causes they care about. We pick the top ideas, submit it to our website, and then we get to work. Fiber. Creative. Connecting. Prototyping. Building. Shooting. <laughs> That's too many. It's all right. I think you get sort of the point of the video. Um, so again, I want to sort of give an overview of the city's digital roadmap. Um, our agency, as opposed to other agencies that may have been around for 20, 30 years, our agency, NYC Digital, has been around only for three years. Um, and the agency was started sort of as uh, a really um, envisioned by, sort of led by the mayor and in his vision. Uh, the mayor, being sort of an entrepreneur, technologist, and innovator himself, really realized the need for an agency focused on. Um, so again, our agency was started um, through the leadership of the mayor, and Rachel Stern-Hout is the city's chief digital officer. Um, our agency is actually part of the mayor's office of media and entertainment. So historically, the mayor's office of media and entertainment is the agency that licenses and permits uh, film and television production on the streets of New York. Um, and and uh, that agency has been around almost during the entire lifetime of the mayor's administration, so about 10, 12 years. And our office was added to the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, again, about three years ago, managing sort of the user experience, online experience of city government. Um, our agency operates in the five core practice areas, or the five pillars of our agency that drive all of our work. Uh, when you actually all entered, you probably signed up for a breakout session sort of related to the five pillars of what our agency you know, works in and operates in. But again, just you know, by way of background, um, we start with access. So our, our first priority is uh, helping New Yorkers connect to the internet and make sure that they have options while, when they're connecting to the internet. The second piece is education. So it's, you know, if you think about it, it's building blocks. So access is sort of the foundation. The second piece is education. Now that people, New Yorkers, are connected to the internet, what tools and what skills can they learn in the classroom and out of the classroom setting to help make sure that they are uh, really uh, reaching all the potential opportunities that exist online, whether it be finding jobs or creating an online portfolio for yourself and sort of marketing, marketing yourself online. Um, so access, education. Education, again, also relates to coding and computer science skills that public school students um, can gain in the New York City school system. The third piece is open data. And, and again, the city, New York City has the most aggressive open data legislation in the entire country, which actually mandates that all of, all of the city's non-personally identifiable data will be made public. Um, and so, to date, about 2,000 data sets have been made public. They sit on the city's open data portal. Um, and then, again, like I said, all of the agencies are under a mandate to release data to the public uh, to really showcase the health of New York City government. Uh, the fourth piece after um, open data is engagement. So connecting with New Yorkers online, figuring out the different uh, town halls that New Yorkers congregate on in, in the digital space, whether it be social media channels and social media platforms, whether it be sort of other avenues that the city, that New Yorkers are sort of naturally um, having discussion around the health and future of the city. You know, near NYC Digital wants to have a presence on those platforms as well to engage in the conversation and to have a conversation with the people that are already sort of discussing these topics naturally. And the last piece, you know, if you have all of the other pieces, the last piece is industry. And that video that we started off with sort of, um, in, in, in a sense, helped us showcase and sell New York City as a great place for tech entrepreneurship. And our agency, specifically in my role within the agency, is working every day with startup entrepreneurs, helping support them um, in terms of operational growth, 
um, and then also connecting them to opportunities within the city to engage in direct public-private partnerships. But I'll get into some of all of that in, in the future in the next few slides. So again, just to take each piece of um, our roadmap, you know, delve a little deep, delve a little deeper into all, all the different pieces that I just discussed. Um, Access, our agency has actually worked in partnership with a number of other city agencies to ensure that our public places are actually connected to the internet. Um, so there are 26 parks, I think actually the number is now 32 parks throughout the five boroughs, including Staten Island, that um, have free access to the internet. Um, let's see, there's some other uh, points that I want to make here. There are actually a number of, uh, in terms of the city trying to identify new opportunities to connect with New Yorkers, we actually took payphone kiosks since those are actually underutilized, as you can imagine now in the age of cell phones and mobile devices. We actually took payphone kiosks and um, outfitted them with public Wi-Fi terminals as well. Um, the next sort of piece is that we're actually getting subway stations connected to the internet, um, though as you all know, the subway is managed by the state, not by the city. Um, and through BTOP funding, which is actually a federally funded um, grant that the city of New York received through stimulus funding, we're actually able to help 300,000 uh, underserved communities get uh, access to the internet. And so what that means is public housing um, and public libraries are actually connected uh, to the internet in a variety of sort of uh, financing scheme, schemes, some, pub, some free and some sort of at very low cost. Um, and finally, there's actually this, I don't know if anyone has seen these, uh, these vans in their neighborhoods or seen them throughout anywhere in New York, but um, the NYCHA, which is the city's uh, public housing um, authority, has actually uh, undertaken this program where they are making vans uh, they're outfitting vans to actually have access to the internet and going to different communities, helping people fill out forms that they need to online, just get connected to you know, benefit services and things like that, especially for people um, in low-income neighborhoods that have zero access to the internet and zero technology as well. Um, so building on access education, I sort of touched upon this. Um, but some of the key takeaways from the education work our agency has done is we actually worked in partnership with the Department of Education to launch the Academy for Software Engineering. Has anyone heard of that program? Yeah. Oh, so the NYC Digital folks, got it. Um, so uh, the Academy for Software Engineering is a program that was piloted in uh, the Flatiron neighborhood in Manhattan and now it's expanded to the Bronx where in addition to the core curri curriculum, um, computer science education has been integrated into the core curriculum for students. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ivy, I think it's for high, uh, middle school students. Oh, sorry, high school students. So it's a program that again started in uh, Manhattan, expanded to the Bronx as the second location. Um, and before, hopefully before the end of the administration and definitely very soon after, the mayor has actually mandated that 20 new schools open. So the, this is baseline that the city budget is something that will be happening. Um, I think sort of the, the mo more interesting thing and the thing that might have uh, hit the news a little bit harder is the Applied Sciences Campus. So have you all heard about the Cornell Technion partnership? Um, so Cornell University and Technion University, uh, Technion University, which is an Israeli-based uh, academic institution, actually partnered to bring um, uh, computer science education to build a facility that uh, was focused on computer sciences education, and that campus will be built out in Roosevelt Island. Um, but the classes have already started, so. Google has generously donated some of their space in Chelsea to house graduates and to house um, these students right now. So at the height of the Google, at the height of the Cornell Technion um, partnership, there will be 2,000 computer science PhDs sort of entering the New York City market looking for jobs, helping spur economic development by working at smaller companies, hopefully startup companies, building their own ideas, building their own products here in New York. Uh, the third piece, again, like I mentioned, is open, open government, open data. Um, 
The city held its first hackathon, and, and we believe the first municipal hackathon in the country uh, before I started, uh, almost about two years ago, and it focused on the redesign of the city's website. So take a stab, if you've been on nyc.gov, how long it's been since um, our, our website has been updated. 20 years? <laughs> <laughs> so the city's website has not been updated in actually um, over 10 years and it has a million pages on the website and so we held this hackathon as a precursor to the city actually um, engaging in a vendor relationship with a partner based out in Dumbo, Brooklyn that is actually helping us redesign the city's website. We're currently in the process of that and we are very hopeful that in fall 2013 the website will be launching, a brand new website will be launching. Um, and again, this hackathon really gave us uh, insight and feedback as to what users, regular users, New York City residents are really looking for when they come to a destination, an online destination like NYC.gov. Um, and since NYC, the NYC.gov hackathon, we've held two additional hackathons, uh, one around sustainability um, in partnership with Plan NYC, and I know Grow NYC was, is here. I think a representative from Grow NYC is here. So you actually helped us uh, compost on site, so that was awesome. Um, but the sustainability hackathon we actually held at NYU Poly last summer um, and drew around 75 to 80 developers to actually help the city build a cadre of sustainability, environmentally focused, uh, sort of recycling, enabling New Yorkers to recycle more and encouraging sort of, you know, green, generally green be behavior. And we had about two, do uh, sorry, a dozen apps, about 14 apps that were built during that weekend. Um, and the final most recent hackathon we had was actually sort of a design-a-thon, infrastructure-a-thon, uh, where we actually invited New Yorkers to reimagine the future of public payphones. So there are still, believe it or not, about 11,000 payphones that scatter the streets of New York City, um, you know, significantly down than what uh, the, the number of payphones that were on the streets before, but still 11,000 is, is quite a bit of opportunity the city saw. And so before the city engages again in another public vendor process to find um, a vendor to manage the payphones, the city owns the payphones, but a vendor actually manages the operations, we invited New Yorkers, developers, designers, students, journalists, policymakers to come, uh, come with, come meet us um, over the course of uh, about three months to help us devise ideas for what that actual infrastructure, street furniture, could look like. Could it be, you know, charging stations for your phone and mobile devices? Could it be Wi-Fi hotspots? What else could it be? And the ideas that were generated from that hackathon blew my mind and sort of. Um, really set, this, set, set a really high precedent that the city needs to reach in terms of what it's actually going to do with those 11,000 pieces of furniture that scatter the streets of New York. Um, uh, a program that my colleague Ivy manages is CodeCore, and I think it's sort of important for me to get into it here. Um, it's a program, and I know a few people that I had talked to are sort of interested in figuring out ways that they could, you know, partner with the city or to bone, you know, how they can use their tech skills for good. And so it's an opportunity uh, through the Code Core program. It's actually an opportunity to work directly with city agencies to build digital tools and apps that could benefit not only the agency and its operations and efficiency, but also could benefit real New Yorkers. Um, and so, you know, it's a it's a first of its kind sort of program. Um, you know, in, in this country, and we're really excited to see what gets built out of it. And a lot of this stemmed from um, the immense response we got from the tech community right after Hurricane Sandy when, you know, they reached out to us to say, what can we do? Can we build, you know, hurricane evacuation zone maps? And what else can we do? How else can we stay engaged? Um, and I think that, you know, this, it wasn't necessarily the right time to launch a program like that then, but, you know, now, now we are totally underway working um, on a number of projects with uh, sort of the public. Uh, the fourth piece that I'd like to touch upon is engagement. So the city actually reaches um, 7.1 million New Yorkers online. So again, that's not only our website, it's also through the city's social media channels. Um, and I think the number is, is 
might astound you. So the city, there are about 80 city agencies that make up local New York City government, and all 80 agencies combined actually uh, manage 315 different social media channels. So that means one agency, like our agency, you know, we have a Facebook presence, we, you know, we're on Twitter, um, we're on Tumblr, um, and some agencies can have up to three or four platforms that they're experimenting on and trying to connect with New Yorkers on. And some agencies are a bit hesitant to sort of jump into that game and, and may just have you know, their website or uh, a Facebook page up to sort of help them uh, test the waters in terms of engagement with New Yorkers. Um, I think something sort of interesting to know is that we've actually tried everything. We've tried Foursquare, we've tried Instagram, some agencies are on SoundCloud. So the city is extremely experimental in terms of trying to meet New Yorkers where they're already congregating online and trying to help sort of engage in the discussion and then sort of get feedback as well. Um, and again, this is really an example of an in-person sort of physical uh, type of environment, but we, you know, we try to do this every day online. And I guess I should note that if you are on Twitter and you, you're thinking about tweeting about tonight's event, feel free to use the hashtag NYC Digital. Um, and uh, you know, feel, let us know what your thoughts are. We're actually encouraging everyone, uh, since this event is actually being taped as well, we're encouraging everyone throughout the course of, this, of, the, of the process of us writing the final version of the roadmap to tweet at us um, and email us, obviously, directly as well, but to tweet at us, NYC, tweet hashtag NYC Digital, to sort of uh, let us know your thoughts if, if people are unable to make you know these events in person. Um, I'm going to go into uh, our Facebook page, and then I'm going to sort of go into my favorite part of the presentation. Our Facebook page, uh, sorry, our, our um, Twitter uh, handle is at NYCGov. We actually also manage at NYC Digital, so feel free to tweet at us at either uh, sort of a handle NYCGov and NYC Digital. Uh, we have about almost 97,000 followers, um, and this handle was actually created because we're assuming most New Yorkers do not want to follow 315 channels um, on these different social platforms, and so at NYCGov is a curated one-stop shop place for New Yorkers who are online to see the highlights of what New York City government is doing daily. Um, again, it's an opportunity to interact with us um, and an opportunity to just get a curated snapshot of how New York City um, government is functioning on a daily basis. Um, through Twitter and through Facebook, actually through Facebook, we, we uh, held a contest called Hashtag Love NYC where it was a photo contest where we invited New Yorkers to uh, show us uh, why they loved their city. Um, and if you're on Facebook, you know that they've actually changed their layout to include uh, sort of a, a cover photo, I think is that what it's called, Ivy? The big photo? So uh, we were at odds trying to figure out, you know, what's a good way to represent New York in that cover photo. We launched this contest, hashtag love NYC, where we invited people to submit photos of their favorite moments of being in New York. We received over 1,900 submissions and spliced all of the photos together to actually create our, our cover photo banner image on our Facebook page. So it's an interesting way for us to sort of get engagement and uh, show you know, sort of the skills of New Yorkers off a little bit as well. Um, so 311, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with the phone number 311, which is the city's uh, non-emergency customer service um, hotline phone number and so 311 actually went digital uh, for the past few years and you can actually tweet your questions at NYC 311 as well as text any questions that you may have to that phone number 311-692. Um, so you know if you walk outside and you see a pothole and you want to send a tweet about it the city will actually be responding to those requests through all these different uh, avenues, whether you go, you call, you go online, or you go um, through your tax, your phone, or through Twitter. So, just again, increasing the number of opportunities for New Yorkers to connect directly with city services. Um, this is my favorite part. 
of the engagement section. Our agency works with a number of agencies to promote uh, homegrown apps, so apps that are built in, you know, internal to city government. These aren't the coolest things that you've seen on the planet, but definitely the most functional. Um, so again, there are 80 agencies that make up government. Uh, there are about 10 apps that are actually in the app um, store. So, and I think most of them have an app version and an Android version, so they're in the Android marketplace as well. Um, and these apps actually really let you sort of uh, get a get a sense of what New Yorkers are do or what the city agencies are focused on. So my favorite app, though we were having a, some debate about this earlier today, my favorite app is the NYC Health app, which is the one on your far right, which actually lets you check to see what restaurant, like what grades restaurants have. So you know the A, B, C, all of those listings. Um, you know. Just type in your favorite restaurant and it'll pull up what grade it has received and sort of the causes for why that grade has existed. So all of the violations that the restaurant has actually gone through. Um, you the Man app is actually a fun app which like, lets you type in, uh, you open the app and you type in sort of who is hanging out with you on a certain evening. Um, or day time, I guess it doesn't really make make a difference, but it helps you uh, choose a designated driver through this uh, game gamified way of helping you choose that and select a person among your group. Um, and 311 also has an app, um, and NYC Media lets you actually check all of the uh, press conferences that the mayor is a part of um, in in uh, live, so you can see them as they're happening. Um, again, sort of the last piece that I want to talk about um, in engagement is actually the work that our agency did. It's a real case study for us and has been a case study uh, sort of nationally is the work our agency tried to do at least um, in terms of communicating with New Yorkers through Sandy. Um, so these are the platforms that we actually tried in addition to our main website, nyc.gov. These are all of the platforms that we used to actually help us reach New Yorkers, sort of give them emergency updates, connect with, you know, connect with people that were, um, you know, uh, in, 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 uh, either isolated or, you know, their homes were in terrible condition, things like that. People weren't able to make calls, uh, but they were able to tweet if they got access to Wi-Fi and things like that. They're actually tweeting at us um, the fire department responded through Twitter um, as well as 311 and our agency actually was working with 311 to, you know, real-time responses to people's questions wherever they were connected to the internet, you know, especially if they weren't able to call the city for information or connect um, through our website. Um, I just wanted to give a sense of this, of the uh, spike that our agency sort of went through during Sandy in terms of users and followers. And I think emergency times, you know, it's sort of obvious that during emergencies, more New Yorkers are trying to connect with the city to get uh, life-saving information. But I think what's interesting for us is how do we keep those New Yorkers that have joined our platforms engaged, sort of in, in perpetuity? How are we connecting with them? How are we coming up? with innovative ways to, you know, engage in dialogue with them. And that's been, um, you know, I think the real test and strength of our agency as well, uh, especially post-Sandy. Um, and finally, I'd just like to touch on industry. Again, industry is the sort of pillar or the section that I sort of do most of my work in, so I'm much more familiar with industry than, than the, other, the, other, the other pieces. But um, there's been almost $3 billion in VC funding um, given to the New York City area, and that's again has beat out Boston as the number two place for venture capitalists and investment firms to invest their money in, in terms of early stage emerging technology. So it's you know it's a it's a huge sort of boon to the city's economy um, as well as jobs creation and, and things of that nature. Um, again, this is actually. Uh, in his own in his own words, there's, uh, Fred Wilson is a very prominent um, venture capitalist based here in New York, and, and in his own words, again, he said, "There's never been a more exciting time 
uh, for tech in New York City. So uh, the mayor has also actually visited a, a lot, probably about a dozen tech companies to date. Um, whether they're hiring, whether they're expanding, whether they're relocating from one part of the city to another. Um, the mayor, again, as a technologist himself, is really committed to helping raise the profile of local companies based here in New York. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think it's, it has set a precedent in terms of what the next sort of administration will do in terms of helping the tech community thrive as well. Uh, we launched a map about a year and a half ago called mappedinny.com. It's or the URL is mappedinny.com. It's the Made in NY digital jobs map, and it actually pinpoints where every technology company is located across the five boroughs, as well as uh, co-working spaces, incubator spaces. Can't wait till you guys join the map. Uh, co-working spaces, incubator spaces, and um, investment uh, VC uh, companies where they're located. Um, and not only does it show uh, sort of a Google mashup of where these companies are located, it actually highlights which ones are hiring. Um, and so you can quickly scroll by companies that are hiring through that sort of, uh, not sure if you can see it, it's like a pink little bar that lets you see which companies are hiring for which positions and whether they're technical and non-technical. Uh, we launched this map. Uh, we had known, you know, we had come in contact with about 600 companies that we knew about, and since the year and a half that the map has launched, you know, we now house 2,400 companies that are based here in New York City that are working um, to make the tech sector grow every day. Um, an initiative that we launched actually four or five months ago is the We Are Made in NY initiative. Have you seen some of those creative and buses and subways and uh, sort of all over the place? But it's creative that our agency put together, um, and we're having a really hard time coming up with the concept behind showing off the city's tech sector. And then we decided, why don't we just showcase the entrepreneurs that are working in the sector themselves? So we actually took photos of about six companies that are geographically diverse and product diverse and things like that, and actually uh, use them as spokespeople for our campaign. And the We Are Made in NY campaign um, again, showcases local talent, um, really trying to show how uh, the technology community is integral to the success of New York City overall, and how the tech technology community is actually disrupting and innovating across a variety of industries, whether they be fashion, finance, food, um, sort of, et cetera. So, Again, these companies are uh, different than the, the map companies, and the reason that they're a bit different and we treat them with a little bit of extra love is because these companies are actually basing all of their operations, especially their development operations, um, here in New York, within the five boroughs. So they're hiring, so that means they're hiring locally, um, and they're bringing you know, sort of external candidates that they wish to see um, you know, brought into their company here to New York, so they're asking people to relocate here as well. Um, and I think sort of one an interesting t thing to know about um, our industry sort of section overall is that we know it's not perfect. We know that there are lots of New Yorkers that are actually sort of, you know, falling to the wayside in terms of connecting and really integrating themselves into the tech sector. Um, and so one program that we launched, and again, this is in its very early stages, and we would love your feedback on, is actually connecting students to internship opportunities within the tech sector. So instead of you know, working at a Duane Reed or at a Walgreens or something like that for the summer, which is traditionally where the city places its student interns, um, you know, we're actually inviting Facebook and Twitter and all the companies that have a, a, a large, a sizable sort of base here in New York to take interns to sort of give them, a, you know, a different path, a different, different uh, um, insight into a different way of uh, working and, and the future of work. We really believe as well. Um, again, one thing that uh, uh, in in the same vein of. You know, we really understand and realize that not all New Yorkers are as equipped to enter the tech sectors as others are. We actually launched um, the Small Business Digital Toolkit in partnership with the Department of Small Business Services to get uh, small brick and mortar businesses that you know sort of occupy the main streets of the five boroughs 
um, connected to uh, the internet, helping them build an online presence for themselves. We actually put together a curriculum that's both in person and online um, that you know, we invite sort of uh, small business entrepreneurs to come in um, and really understand what the benefits of building an online profile for themselves really could be. And we, you know, we work with them sort of stage by stage, building a website, launching social media channels, integrating e-commerce into their business, you know, figuring out how to manage reviews on Yelp and things like that. So sort of the whole gamut of uh, digital um, well-being for a small business. And, and one of the last things I'd like to sort of touch upon before we close is the city um, actually, and we believe it's the first city sort of internationally that has actually been approved to have a top level domain. So top level domains are the dot coms and the dot orgs, et cetera. NYC actually was approved by the International Governing Board of Domain Names, uh, which is called ICANN, to have um, its own top level domain, which is dot NYC. Um, the expected rollout is winter 2014, but what that really means is that we're actually trying to engage with New Yorkers early in the process, um, engage with small businesses early in the process to help them anchor themselves um, with the dot NYC and to really show pride of place in you know, working here, being from here, and building a business here. So that's something really exciting that uh, we have um, down the pike. So any questions around anything that I mentioned in the presentation? No. Oh, yes. Um, it's not online yet. We, we're probably going to put it online after the end, all of the meetups. So uh, it's really, you know, all, all of the points that are referenced in this PowerPoint are actually in your hand in that progress report document that we put together that really show everything our agency has been working on. The digital roadmaps are both online. So we wrote a roadmap in 2011 and in 2012. So both of those documents are online. Um, and this presentation is really helping us gear for the final roadmap that we'll produce before the end um, of this administration. Yeah. This seems to be very New York City and an focus and Brooklyn focus. So how is this going to be rolled out in Staten Island? How, how is the roadmap? How is this going to be pushed more in Staten Island and introduced more in Staten Island? We seem to be sort of left behind so there are definitely a number of city agencies that are, are working to really um, re-energize and uh, invigorate the Staten Island tech community. So our agency, obviously, as you can tell, focuses on the tech aspects of the city's overall economic development. Um, so the city's Economic Development Corporation investing in the Staten Island makerspace is really an opportunity for us to enter into this into this. Um, community and into the maker community that's been really strong and thriving in Staten Island for a number of years and you know lots of people have really uh, sort of voiced their opinions on how that community um, has existed and you know building a home for it and building sort of a place for it to grow so that's really um, I think one example of what we've been doing. And also just to follow up, like that's part of why we're here tonight and, and we're going to do the breakout sessions which you want to do this second. So, Get some feedback from Staten Islanders on what we could be doing better. Um, we're going to Edinburgh, but we're here tonight. What could we be doing better to communicate uh, with Staten Islanders? And also, one thing, Seema, uh, the Small Business Digital Toolkit is something that we created that all small businesses citywide can use and access. Uh, and so, maybe we could be promoting it better here. We'd love to hear from you about how we can do that. But again, part of why we're here. Uh, yeah. So again, I think uh, my colleagues probably mentioned this to you when you came in, but again, we're going to be breaking out into five different sections um, to sort of uh, go deeper into each of the topics that are that the presentation covered, and to really be constructive in terms of feedback and to offer new ideas for what uh, we can add to the roadmap. You know, as we're in the process of writing it and, and documenting um, all of the needs of New Yorkers. Um, across the city. So again, these are some questions that could help guide the conversation. I don't in any way intend for them to direct or dominate the conversation, but just some 
ways to sort of get the conversation started in, in the five different areas. Um, how can we meet the access and infrastructure needs of a big city? How do we ensure that students and transitioning professionals have the technology education skills they need to compete? How can we help grow um, the open data and open government, open government movement? Um, what are some uh, new, innovative, different sort of engagement strategies that our agency can really, you know, really try to d uh, dabble in to help us um, with our uh, communication with New Yorkers? And then again, finally, how do we support a vibrant and inclusive tech sector um, across the five boroughs? So I think you all signed up for a breakout. Is that, is that all right? Is that ever, no? No, okay. So uh, my colleague Erica can actually help, um, help you sign up if you didn't when you came in. Um, and I just wanna give you guys the spaces as to where we'll be meeting. So, um, access, education, and open government will actually be meeting upstairs, so you can take these stairs right outside. Uh, room 216 is access, room 201 is education, and room 204 is open government. Um, and engagement and industry, number four and five, will actually be meeting in this space, and we'll sort of bring half the people to the front of the room and half the people to the back of the room um, to make sure the conversations are separate. But. Uh, in the same place. So again, room 216 is for access and infrastructure, room 201 is for education, and room 204 is for open government. Um, there will be an NYC digital person in each one of your breakouts as well um, to just document everything that's said, document all the feedback um, and, and recommendations that, are, that, are, that have been mentioned. And I just want to sort of bring Noel back, Noel back up again to talk about the different um, goals that we have, to talk about the goals that we have for the breakouts. Again, I know he referenced three things. Um, when we reconvene, we're actually going to invite a group leader, sort of someone from the group, self-elected, to present the top recommendations, the top discussion points that your group engaged in. Um, so if you could pick one person from your group to come back and represent um, the discussion that your group had, that would be awesome. And I think you had referenced three to five uh, top points. Um, and, and again, there'll be time after your group presents to hear from other New Yorkers as well. So, you know, if you, there's something that, you know, the access group didn't talk about, uh, feel free to chime in and, and things like that. So very, very open and very much trying to get as much information as we can as we produce this final document. Any questions about that? Um, let me see what time it is. Um, so we'll probably do about 25 minutes for the breakouts. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll aim for 825 or so and then we can really get kick this, the uh, group discussion section, at, sorry, the reconvening section at 8.30. So let's, let's aim for 825. 216 is access, 201 is education, and 204 is open government. The other two will be down here. Hi, everybody. Um, so just to be uh, proficient in time, um, can I get the five moderators or, or the representatives to come up here to the front? Um, we're going to go in sequence of uh, access, technology, or education, open government, engagement, and then uh, technology industry. Um, this is what I'd like from all the people who are going to be presenting. If you could just give your name, um, kind of like uh, why you came here, and then be really quick about those, those two minutes, and then we'll have the audience ask some questions. Okay, so Jolly. Okay, well, I was the only person in the, uh, in the access group this time, so, uh, but uh, I come already with a, with a bunch of with a questions that I actually posted in the meetup group, if you go there and you'll see that, which is that I happened to um, look at the 2012 uh, digital roadmap that's online, and that I found that there's a bunch of projects which are connect, Connected NYC, which uh, Wired NYC, NYC Broadband Connect Map, uh, the Broadband Express and the Digital Divide, um, pro which are all worthy projects that don't seem to me could 
been re-input input back into the system to be carried on because not any of them are actually quite on the this. They're, they're all under BTOP. They're actually all BTOP programs. They're all BTOP programs? Yes. Okay. Okay, well, or, I, what I would like is, when I'm going to come to the next one, if you could give more detailed report on how those, how those things are happening within the BTOP. I just appreciate that. And then the other thing, since I've got about a minute left, is there's, um, as we know, that you know, there's a .NYC uh, top-level domain coming, and as, as a matter of fact, there's going to be a bunch of reserved names for neighborhoods, and it's something that should be thought about by the community is what would be the best way of using those names in, in the neighborhoods, and there's a kind of suggestion that we came up with a few, year, a few years back, which the idea of making, an, and, and this could be engagement, making an NYC wiki so that the, 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 you actually uh, make it a form of access for people to create local content, take you know, the information that's in their local communities, especially the heritage of those communities, interviewing the old people and finding out the history of their local areas and posting it up and, and having something that would, wouldn't have the restrictions that Wikipedia has but enables people to create content. So as it's access, in this case, people to create and produce information rather than reach information. So NYC Wiki, and we, there is one existing, but it, hasn't, it needs more power behind it to make it work. Okay, great. Time to wait. Stand. All right. Anybody have any questions for, for Jolly and the Internet Access Group? Like, what were the first things that he was talking about all those list of programs? I'm going to leave Seema is going to mention those, talk more about those things later. But uh, as I said, if you go to the meetup page, I detail I detail them there on the meetup page. Great. Okay. Hi, um, my name is America Graywall, and I want to tell you something real fast about meetup. When you go there, everyone who checked in, you can say, good to see you. It's a really awesome tool to connect the people that you see here. I really encourage you to do that. Um, I was with the education group. Um, my name is Amedica Graywell. I tweet as Amedica G. I'm on Meetup. Please say hi to me. Uh, with me was Bruce from Curtis High School, also Joe from the Small Business Development Center, and DB from the Staten Island Makerspace. We were in the education group, and one of the biggest things we talked about was getting education and business together. Um, we want to know what classes to teach that businesses want. We want to have real world projects for our students to work on. Um, we would like to get college and high school and middle school students into the businesses and one of the challenges we identified is that the businesses, especially small businesses, don't always have a background in what they're hiring. And so one of the roles we thought New York City Digital could play was in helping with that placement process, giving an idea of communication, of social media standards, um, basically guidelines for the internships and the apprenticeships, so that the students are learning things in the classroom, but they're also learning how to apply them, which makes the lessons they learn much more relevant. We talked about technical skills. We talked a lot about business skills. One of the biggest things is that everyone feels that you have to leave Staten Island to find opportunity. And yet our millennials are saying, we don't want to commute. We want a higher quality of life. Homegrown businesses have deeper roots in the community. They will do everything they can to hold on to their employees to make the quality of life that much higher. And so if we can bring the businesses here, if every single project that we do has an entrepreneurship component, then it it teaches our students at an early age how to keep the business here on Staten Island and really strengthen our community roots. 30 seconds. I teach class Monday, Wednesday at 420. Any industry representatives that want to come talk to my class, you are welcome. Bruce had the same offer at Curtis High School. Thank you. And uh, does anybody have their yeah, clap? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, anybody have any questions? You can find me on Meetup. I'm there for LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'm tweeting as a Medica G, A M E R I K A G. I'll respond to you right now. Thank you. Uh, did also, did any, any, anybody else from the education group have something to add that wasn't included in that? Um, okay, great. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Dominic Ambrose, and uh, I'm a blogger that's interested in development on the North Shore and preservation of historic buildings on the North Shore. And so uh, one of the things that we were talking about was uh, how to get uh, information on the city websites about uh, about the history of buildings and the violations and et cetera, and whether that was um, personal data or if it was actually in the open data um, category and, and would be available online. Um, that sort of got to the point where we started brainstorming about ways that the uh, nyc.gov website could serve uh, to help people uh, make decisions about how to improve their property and how to make their uh, properties more uh, sustainable. So um, the, we were sort of tossing back and forth ideas about whether, uh, whether the city could give information about types of, of renovations that would be historically accurate or whether a particular um, uh, property is a, uh, elig eligible for um, help with solar paneling or if it would be uh, efficient to have solar uh, paneling in that particular property. Um, from there, we went to um, discuss how uh, individuals and groups in the city would be able to uh, make their voices heard about issues that concern them. And we talked about uh, the um, We the People website, which uh, is run by the White House in which uh, a certain number of signatures on a petition will uh, mean that that petition will get a response from the White House and uh, whether something like that would be possible in New York City. And so someone was telling us about uh, the fact that the city had worked with Change By Us, which was a, uh, a digital engagement platform uh, in which individuals could give suggestions, uh, but that that had been um, probably superseded by the hackathon concept, which came later. Thomas, you're out of time. I'm out of time. All right. Well, good. <laughs> so, any questions about that? Does anybody have any questions for Dominic? Or anything that they want to say that was in the open data, that was in the open data group that they wanted to add, or the open government group? Okay, great. Good evening, I'm Marilyn Zayford. I'm a digital communicator here on Staten Island. And I edit a digital hyperlocal curation called Staten Island New York City Living. So you can find us everywhere on Twitter, Tumblr. We have a blog. We have a website, StatenIslandNewYorkCityLiving.com. Um, the goal of our group was to find out how New York City could better engage the community and let them know what services are available to them. So uh, the group determined three particular goals and they are that the city needs to pay attention to who they are trying to reach and select the digital or analog platform that makes the most sense for the demographic. And that is because different targeted demographics are on different social networks. That's why they're social networks. You find people that are like you or that they enjoy the same things that you do. So the city has to really take the time to target who they are going to be reaching in particular and not just do some kind of blanket job that reaches nobody. Um, the city needs to engage Staten Island residents in particular because we're a little bit different than the other boroughs in locations where people spend most of their time. So, um, you know, in other parts of the city, public transportation is really big, but here on Staten Island, our public transportation is not what is being used by everybody here. Um, so there are other areas that you can reach people like the malls, um, business centers, post office, DMV, the ferry, and we even did speak about reaching en masse through our education system or the schools. And the third part was access to technology because we're still critical. We need to remember the seniors, 
we need to give better access to people um, who need technology and it's a long one, I'm sorry. Um, we have to keep it simple, um, keep, them communicated, can keep them communicating during an emergency as we had during Sandy, people couldn't communicate and uh, making sure that the channels are operating during emergencies. Thank you. Justin, Angelique, and Scott, and we were, we were passionate not just about tech and startups, but also about Staten Island and growing a local community out here. Um, we were talking about the technology industry, and we don't have that out here. And the way to, we all wanted, you know, big goals, but the way to start is through small goals, and that's through community building. And local community building for startup culture, and also for a uh, tech community as well, um, through meet through meetup groups, workshops, um, startup weekend events, things like that to help propel, you know, grow a community and move forward. Um, also, keeping young talent here in Staten Island. A lot of young talent is leaving, and by having great events, tech events, and um, you know, great mentors out here as well, maybe from the city, bring them over, and having a great mentorship opportunity for young talent out, out here as well. will help keep them here and grow the community also from short to long term. Um, and also through education as well. Uh, and also sweetheart deals for bigger tech companies that might be based in Brooklyn or Jersey or Manhattan and bringing them to downtown Staten Island and say, hey, we have great space with great views, have your tech start up here and have them grow maybe in downtown Staten Island and move more to, into Staten Island where they have bigger space and you know, start harming local community town out here as well. And also um, financial incentives to, for, such as for tolls to bring talent here and to bring startup business here as well. So I, those are some great small steps that we can initiate within the next few years that could bring in those longer term uh, growth that we see in Brooklyn and Manhattan. Thank you. Um, I also just recently started a meetup group, uh, uh, Staten Island Startup uh, Tech Meetup. So I'm actually planning on having the first one at the New York City Art Cipher in August. And I'd like to have you know great people like James from the Fat Startup come and talk about what's going on in the city and you know how we could start initiating that here. And uh, I hope you know join us on Meetup, and you're going to see um, you know some new dates coming for August and September and some great events as well. Thanks. What was the name of it? Great. Um, any other comments about any of the present the presenters that just came out? No. Uh, um, what What was the, like the most uh, uh, interesting statement that you heard uh, all all evening? Support from the tech people. Got, we've got the people here. We've got the great stuff, but then we have very We've got to try to keep them here. We go sit in the third time and we see the people go from 6 30 in the morning, from 10 30, 11 o'clock at night, they're coming home. 
they won't, they're all working in Manhattan, but they won't have people like me working here for us. I'm working for our kids and our future. I agree with him, and I think being here made me realize that um, Staten Island, the good thing about Staten Island is it has a very old style, and it's very family oriented, but on the flip side of that, it's lacking so much in technology because of the type of jobs that are out here, like I see a lot of plumbing, a lot of air conditioning and heating, and I see a lot of architecture and builders, which is, which is good. 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, but technology I've not seen enough of it. And, and being here today kind of opened my eyes to that, that he's right. Everyone is going to Brooklyn and Manhattan and Queens for their tech jobs. I'm one of them. I'm on the ferry five days a week. And then I come back to Staten Island. And, and the person that comes to mind when I get to Staten Island is uh, architecture. It's not technology. It's architecture. And, and um, I would like to have the technology job on Staten Island. So I'm trying to take the it's all because, I'm oh, sorry. Um, and on the historical perspective, the people that built New York City lived on Staten Island, the Vanderbilt, they lived here and they built in the It's all because, I mean, back in 1995, um, Teleport was one of the best lit um, places in the country. The, the what? The Teleport. Oh, oh. Okay. It was one of the it was one of the places in the country that had the best connectivity. And now it's been, it hasn't been so far to build it up, but what happened to the tech sector that happened around that? The problem is that the people can't come to us. We can only reach the people that are here on Stack Island. That's really a very limited population. And even though we're connected with New York City and we want to keep People can't come to us. It's 15 dollars by car. There's no real bus. There's no real ferry service. There's no real transportation service. It's the biggest issue that's hurting us here on Staten Island. I mean, I can't even consider. I'm, I'm going to take it off in the fall, and I'm, it's hard for me to even consider a central Staten Island location. Because if I want clients from Manhattan or Brooklyn, they're not going to come to Central Staten Island. I have to look over here in the North Shore so that I can connect with people. And that's really the critical problem. The, the, the transportation, um, the port authorities crippled us with tolls. The people who don't want to come here, $15 is a lot of money. You have no, I, I think a lot of. A lot of what you're saying is actually similar to the conversations we were having in Brooklyn, which we did the first roadmap meetup in Brooklyn uh, about two weeks ago, and they were talking about the downtown Brooklyn, Brooklyn Navy Yard area, and downtown Brooklyn obviously has um, access to transportation, but the Navy Yard doesn't. Um, and they're, you know, very similar kinds of things, so I'm glad you brought it up again. And, uh, you know, our purpose with, the, with these meetups is to aggregate all of the information, sort of, you know, pin out, pinpoint the top sort of recommendations and the top discussion points that came out and sort of make sure we integrate it into a document that we hope will not only serve as a legacy of what our agency did, but actually offer real tangible recommendations for the next administration as well. So thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thanks. Oh, uh, Lyle, did you want to add something? Yeah. Uh, you know, what we're saying is, is great. And what, what came out of our group was that if we wait for the city and we don't find leaders in our community to take this on and say, I want to initiate this, I want to start this, I want to bring this group together, I want to bring multiple groups together, it's not going to happen because that's why these other startup communities have grown, Colorado, and, and, and then there's even, you know, in the Midwest, there's tech, tech startup communities growing in suburban areas, and they grow because of their local community, not because they're waiting for the metropolitan city to help them. So, uh, oh, uh, Hen Henry? <laughs> yeah, Henry. <laughs> and um, think back to the transportation thing, um, tourists have been using the Staten Island Ferry to just go back and forth and see the Staten Island Liberty. And for free, like, I see, I see why they have to use the Staten Island Ferry for commuters, but for tourists, they're just going back and forth, not even going to Staten Island. No, 
no. I think that's a good point, and, I, and I've heard sort of similar concerns from the downtown, you know, the promenade area in Brooklyn, where that's the same sort of situation as well. Um, but I just wanted to thank, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, we have one more minute, and then I have to, I, we all turn into pumpkins, so. I think there's a lot to watch that. We're looking forward to any help. I was part of the industry group, um, and I told this I think one of the most important things when you have sat down is an innovation center. A place where, where people can go and learn how to innovate. There's so many people that want to do something, they have ideas, they don't know where to start with it. And I think that would be a great thing to sat down. We can create a center where people can go and find the resources. Since we are so secluded, as a starting point, a center where they can go and find the resources get the help, get pointed in directions, start innovating new ideas of this, and get away from just architecture terms. You know, you could start an innovative retail business today. Yeah. You don't need to be in Manhattan or New Jersey. So if you can do it right into your home, yeah. you need a little help. Yeah. But I think that would and empowering the organizations that are already on the ground to be able to spread this information and knowledge as well. I think so. it's probably, we can add something else to the maker space all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. I'd like to sort of give a round of applause to you all for being with, her, being with us this evening and spending all of your time and sharing all of your ideas. Um, again, our agency really hopes to launch the final version of the roadmap, um, hopefully early fall of 2013, so in the next few months. So please keep an eye out for that. And if you would like to attend any of the other meetups at all, the next one is in the Bronx, um, August 6th, and the final one is in Queens on August 13th. Please feel free to join us and keep the discussion going, share your ideas with that community as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you.